Okay, so I'm going to use the smaller brush in hopes that I don't have too much paint on it. Get that uh, country red. And I'm walking away from the color a little bit. It's such a pretty color. I love this color. And I'm just going to put it right in the corner here. I'm not going to try to walk out too far with it and just leave it in the corner. And I'm going to go across his nose. Try not to make it too bright. Oh, I kind of did. I kind of made it come up higher than I hoped. You know what? It's cold in the, where? The North Pole. <laughs> and then the other cheek again. I'm trying to keep it towards that corner and not like all the way out. So I'm going to go this way. And just hopefully stop not pull it all the way out. That looks good. And then the bottom lip. Pink that up a little bit. Oh, he's getting cute. We should definitely give him his eyes. I'm going to get a little black out. Uh, just because it makes, then we can put his eyebrows and his hairs and he's going to look so handsome. So I'm going to use my little like detailer brush. This is probably close to a number one round, but I don't know. It doesn't have a number on it. So um, I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going to go get some brushes and then I'll be able to tell you exactly what I'm using. And I have his eyes traced on here, so I'm just going to as best I can. I, can't, I don't know how my camera works. Get in there and give them some eyes. Now circles and ovals can really grow on you. So just take your time. Make sure your paint is nice and wet so it'll move and you can get that shape the way you want it. Because you don't want them to have lopsided eyes or, you know, it, it has a tendency to the eyes are the windows to the soul. <laughs> Even to Santa's soul. And as I talk, I, you know, mess up and the eyes grow. But just try your best to make them even. And, you know, because they are kind of on a slant. So there he is. Look, he has eyes. And we're going to put his highlights in the eyes in a minute. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get the white while we have it on our palette. And the script liner. Now a script liner tends to be longer bristled because there are the other liners. Um, and I think there are probably fewer bristles on a script, but you can Google it and find out what the differences are. Um, I tend to just like the brush when I know what it can do, not by what its name is. I like to use it and then feel it and see what if what it does. And then I can judge, <laughs> you know. So, but in general, a script liner, you can, it holds a lot more water so you can make it really like scrolly. Like you should be able to go and make a lot of squiggly stuff. So I'm going to make the hairs. I'm not going to make this too watery because I want some, it to be able to be thick and thin. I'm going to get my tracing too because she has specific places that she put them and I like where she put them. So I'm going to put my tracing right here and kind of use it as my guide of where I want to put my hairs. And I'll get in the shot, that would be helpful. So I'm taking my liner and it's pretty loaded and you want to start at the edge of where his hat goes and kind of make it like it's coming out from underneath as best you can. You know, I mean, it's a cutesy piece. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, you want to just pull it. Let the brush do the work. Pull out of here. There's a, another one here. And there's a couple down further. And that's it. I'm going to flip my piece because I'm right-handed and I, my, I just like to pull that way. It's easier for me to pull in one direction. So don't be afraid to, to move the piece and figure out where you feel comfortable. <laughs> I'm going to flip my tracing too because then I'll be able to understand where it's going but this is like a very helpful little tip to do all right so let's see then he has 
one coming this way, kind of going straight up, and then another one there. And little ones, big ones. It's just a guideline, but I like, when I like the artist's rendition, I use it. That's what it's there for. I mean, she created this piece for us to enjoy. And thank goodness she did because I love her work. And that's it. His little hairdo is good. He's got a few hairs coming. I'm going to put on his eyebrows. Those are, like I said, they're on the tracing. So it's a very good um, rendering there for you to go by. And I just made a line with my, um, when I was tracing the pattern on, to get the shape to go right. So I'll, st you know what, I'm going to pull them upside down. It's just easier for me. And I'm just going to pull white, try to get the paint nice and wet so it moves and comes off the brush because you don't want it sticky. And they kind of angle down like that. Not quite Dr. Green eyebrows. Pretty close though, Santa. You need to manicure these babies. All right. So, and a little, another one over here. And you'll find that like sometimes your right side, it just comes easier to you like than doing the left side or something like that, you know. Um, they're not going to be identical. And, you know, in life, I don't think that both sides are identical. I kind of like them. I might just leave them like that. I think they look cute. He's a little sparse here and here and here and here. I like it. I'm leaving it. Stop. Now, the other thing that was on his eyes were dip dots of to give him a sparkle. I put a little, I'm going to use the very tip of my liner and put a little just touch down right at the top right of the eye and then she does another one right at the bottom left even smaller and that's it now he has his twinkle in his eye he has a little highlight on his lip to the left over here just a little mark like that you see that um i think we're going to trace those glasses on now we're getting close to done and then we'll be able to do our um gingerbread men, but he's coming together. Um, let's see. The uh, face, let's see. Paint the highlight strokes on the, oh, we gotta do the lenses. Right, upper lip, paint the eyes with lamp black and use a stylus to dot the eyes. Well, we did it with the brush. Paint the highlight strokes. Okay, we're gonna put the lenses on. So I'm gonna go away and trace them on. I'm going to use my light colored graphite. I'm going to use this because I don't want this line to be dark because I'm going to use this. And I think I'll be able to see it well enough that um, I won't have a dark line there to erase. Um, all right, so I'll see you in a minute. It's totally singing. And I was really glad that you guys weren't <laughs> listening. At about this time, your paper towel is probably getting really wet. So you can just set that aside and let it dry, and then you can use it again some other time. But you need to just get another, um, I'm just using like two halves, fold it in half, and um, that should do it. But you need a dry paper towel, because if it's wet, it's not really absorbing anything. Now I traced, you can see definitely the um, tracing, what the heck, right here. Like you can see the white line. It's a white graphite line, but I like that better. I don't want to see black lines. I just did the little nose thing and the two spheres. And we're going to float some glasses on. Now, originally on the one I did, I put a wash of white on first. It doesn't say to do that, but I just did it. And it was a dark wash because I do everything dark. It's just my way. And I kind of regretted it because I knew that I could have done it better and made them look much more see-through, okay? They're glasses. They're clear. You don't want, they're not supposed to look white. So, you know, obviously it was a boo-boo. And I, I could have went back and like, I don't know. At this point, it's really hard to fix anything you do because anything you take off 
it's going to interfere with all this shading you've done already and all that stuff. So you really don't want to have to take anything off. Um, but a wash is just filling in this circle with paint and letting it dry. But she doesn't do that. So just forget I even talked about a wash. <laughs> I'm going to do what she says to do, and that is to float. Let me tell you what it says. Um, float the lenses of Santa's glasses with titanium white. I'm going to use the white, the straight white, and we're going to float, meaning we're side loading the brush, working it out on our palette and getting that graduation of color. I'm going to go up against the outside edge and go dark around the edge to nothing so that it should be clear in the middle. Hopefully that's what I'm hoping for. Let's give it a try. My desk starts to get really messy around this time too. <laughs> I just have stuff everywhere. All right. You know what? I'm going to move over a bit and so you can see what I'm doing, but I still need to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to, there we go. All right. Um, this wood is wonky too. It's warped, which is fine. I don't mind. Um, going into my water blot, getting some white and working that into my brush. You can't see what I'm doing right here. And it's white. So what's the point? but I'm loading the brush. I have quite a bit of paint still, and we'll see what happens because I can take it off if I'm quick with a wet wipe or whatever. So what I wanna do, I wanna get over this so I can see, and I'm gonna float around the edge all the way around the circle. Um, moving fast because I acrylics dry quickly and I want to get the whole thing done. Come on, a little bit further. And round. All right, stop. Now, because you can't keep pity patting in it. You can't play with it because you'll pull off what you did. That, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a little bit lopsided. <clears throat> Just that one little spot. I'm going to try and take off a smidge and leave it. Now, as it dries, you can see it's a lot more see-through than the original one I did. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm reloading my brush. Rinse it, blot, pick up some white, and work it into the bristles. Now I'm going to move this out of the way and try to just focus on what I'm not, might not talk or whatever, but I'm going to put this down and try to follow that line, that tracing line that you probably can't see very well, but I can see it fine. And keep moving that paint around the edge of the line, all the bristles on the surface until I get to the end. Yay, I'm pretty happy. It definitely looks better than the first one because the first one's like opaque. It's like he has, I don't know, where are they? There he is. Mirror glasses on or something. I don't know. Still cute, but not the effect I was going for. So I changed it. <laughs> and I think she actually has you doing highlight strokes. Paint the frames of the glasses with lamp black and paint the stray hairs and eyebrows. We did that. This step will be painted after the cuff of the hat is completed. So I think we're pretty much done. Well, I might as well do the black um, connected on there with the black. So I'm going to take that nice script liner, go into my black. I still have black on my palette. And if you have, when you have paint on your palette like this and it's kind of dry, you just, there's like a little film that forms on top and you just pull the wet paint from underneath and get it wet. So don't, don't waste it. There's paint under there. Even if it looks like it's hard, like even this green, see there's wet paint under there. It's just under the film. If you just need it a little, you can just grab it like that. But anyway, I'm going to get black on my brush, nice and inky. So it moves like ink. I'm over to my piece and I think I did trace the, yes, I did trace the line for his little glasses and I'm getting over it a little better. I lost it. 
And that's it. And then there's one like to connect. Where's my tracing? Here. Sometimes like, you know, if I'm freehanding it, I definitely like to have a reference. So I grab it, grab the tracing and like it it's at like like right here. On the tracing, you can see it stops at the third square, so like right around there, and it's like kind of towards the top. So I'll do that. I just kind of go towards the top and the third square and connect it. And then on the other side, the same thing. If you know, if you don't want to trace it on, which I just don't need to trace everything on, I can do it this way. But it's helpful to trace it on if you want to. Go ahead, take the time to do it. So that so this is like around right around the fourth square. And then one, two, three, four, right here. And that's it. He has his glasses on, but we have to highlight them. Babe, are you trying to saw? Yeah? Oh, he, he nodded. Um, because Right after this, I'm going to upload and then you can saw and then I have to come back and charge my batteries. Okay. <laughs> so it also says to do, and you can see it on the tracing, these little lines right here are like highlight lines on the glass. So we're going to do that with the script liner, inky, inky paint. And I think I'm going to make, um, there's one right here. And there's one kind of like all the way around the bottom. Like that. Am I in the shot? No. And do this one. Get it wet. And there's one up here. So that's like really wet. I don't want it that wet because that is going to kind of come up see-through. And then right here, they both look really wet, but they'll dry. And you, we got to put our dip dots on. All right, so the glasses look done. I got to let, that is a little bit wet. You can see how that's a little wetter. But we're going to use a stylus. This is like a nice size stylus. I like this. And we're going to put our dots on his hat now because I'm going to go away, upload some stuff, and then I'll come back and um, we'll do the gingerbread men. But he's pretty much done. We just have to do the gingerbread men. So I wanted to do his little hat um, dots. And look, I'll show you again. I could trace all these little dots on here, but I don't need to. I'm just going to line it up. And she's got them kind of evenly spaced along. So you need a fresh puddle of black um, plum. And you dip dot. You literally dip and dot. So you dip, dot, dip, dot. And I am just going to evenly space these along the cuff line first. And then kind of try and go in between. And that's how they come out even best you know let's see if it goes all the way down to there yes it does like one last one then kind of start putting them in between and and if you don't push down all the way like it makes a smaller dot or if you do it, like, again, it makes a smaller dot. Alrighty, now I don't want to touch these, so I'm going to walk away. I'm going to let you see what we have so far. Um, pretty sure Santa is all done. Just the uh, gingerbread men have to be done. But look, I love the glasses. I'm going to definitely put, um, once I varnish it, I'm going to put the glossy accents on again because I think that'll just add to it. But they definitely look clearer, so I'm happy about that. Um, so we're going to do the gingerbread men when we get back. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, 
I just saw the video and I like it. I think it's going to be good. It's not as long as the other one and I think I'll upload it. Um, we're on to our gingerbread and the first step after basing them with the um, camel color paint, we're going to do some stippling. And these are the stipple brushes I have. There's This says stippler on it and this is by Low Cornell. Um, DM stippler and I do think they sell these I got these at probably a seminar you can see the price $8.95 that one was but I think I got these at a class and when you take a class sometimes they have the brushes that they use that they recommend because then you can use the tools that they're using and it's it's good so I usually buy them but um, I'm gonna use Probably the bigger one and it says to do a brush mix right here stipple the gingerbread with a brush mix of camel and honey brown float the gingerbread with a wash see it says float with a wash of honey brown and then shade around the edge with burnt sienna so there's a lot of steps here but I, I think it's in order to get all right I'll show you how I lay the brush in order it's in order to get them to look a certain way she does that so Here's my two colors. I'm going to go first into the camel and I'm going to just load the brush this way by pouncing it on my palette and then grab some whatever that was honey brown and pounce that. So now I have a brush mix and I'm going to go to my little gingy bread and just pounce them and I'm not going to go all I'm going to kind of stay to toward the middle ish and see if it what it looks like. I think she's going for like an icing or something. I can't even really see it as a difference of color. It's a little bit darker. I'm just loading my brush again. I'm going first color, bounce, second color, bounce. So that's a brush mix. Then I'm going to come to my piece. I'm going to zoom down a little bit. I know which way to move the camera thing. and just up and down, straight up and down, all over, just bounce. And I mean, listen, I'm just doing what she said to do and not knowing why is like, you know, I don't know why, but hopefully it'll all, it's a layer. We're building layers and you know, I'm just going to do what she says, so I'm loading again. I'm just going to get a, again, bouncing on my palette, then the darker color, bounce. So I'm getting a brush mix, and I'm going to go back to my little guy and just bounce it. And that's it. I don't know if it's a sufficient enough amount or whatever, but I'm leaving that. That step is done. Just put my brush in, in the water. Then it says to float the gingerbread with a wash of honey brown. I'm not going to float it with a wash of honey brown. I'm just going to put honey brown um, a wash. So I'll show you. This is what I did to the first ones. And I mean, they turned out really cute. They look cute. So I'm not, I mean, I don't know. I think you can kind of see some texture back there. So I'll show you what uh, I'm considering. Uh, I'm going to just dry this. I've said this before and before I knew what a, a heat gun was, I used to just bring a, an old blow dryer. Oh, now you can see that little added texture. Yeah, definitely. I can see it. Okay, so a wash, we're going to use this darker color, the, um, double check, where are we, gingerbread, honey brown is this darker color, and to make a wash, I'm going to use a, um, a round. Now, we haven't talked about a round, but a number three round is my favorite. This is a four, so I will definitely be buying a three, and I have a two. It's so weird, I don't know how, I, I, must, I kill my brushes, I'm too hard. Let's see if I have a three. This must be a three. Yep, this is a three. I'll use it. But see how the bristles are starting to get a little... But when you wet it, it might stay together. Yeah, it does. 
This is my favorite. I'm going to use a number three round, I say I would say, is your go-to brush, too. But if it's when it starts to split and get weird on you, you got to get a new one. All right, so to make a wash, I'm going into my water and then just coming, I'm tapping, but bringing it right to my water. I didn't blot. And I'm adding that water to the paint. I'm pulling it out. A wash you consider water with a little bit of paint in it. I'm getting some more water and doing it again. So it, it needs to be see-through when you put it on your piece. I think that's probably enough because, yeah, now I've made, I add more, because it's only the three little, three little gingerbreads we need to have enough paint for. But that's my wash right there. So it's basically water with paint in it now. I've done the ratio more water than paint. I'm taking my brush and I'm gonna clean it. Blot. And now when I pick up from the puddle, that's my wash on my brush. I'm not, I don't have anything else. Where did I splash it? All right, so I'll do my, I see, you can see the difference. You can see that little texture we just added. So that's cool, that looks cool. All right, so I'm gonna take my naked brush and I'm gonna pick up some wash out of that puddle and go to my piece and I'm gonna go all around it, all the way around, cover it with that color. Now this is the darker color. Oh, I just totally went out of lines. And you have to move fast with a wash. Totally out of lines again. <laughs> I'm like panicked. Um, Cause it, it will dry and you will pick up what you put down. All right, good enough. Grab a coupon, a coupon. Can't, I can't call these the things they are. It's a Q-tip. I call it a toothpick coupon. That's it. I'm just letting it dry. What is that? and blot my brush again. I don't want paint all over it. Um, load it from this puddle. I still have some here and some there. This is not a wash, but I'll do a, I'll probably make it a little wetter after this next guy. Um, same thing. Just paint the whole thing. with It's water that's tinted milk chocolate was it or honey brown honey brown all over it's just a wash and again i don't know why but i think it's gonna look good <laughs> and i'm just gonna add a little more water to this because i think i started getting running out and now i'll pick up right from that puddle and do my last little guy up oh, totally out of the line, Sarah. What in the heck? Cause you can get um a little too hasty, you know. Put my brush in the water, picking that up, and that's it. So that step is done. Now it wants us to float, and you know I know how to do that. So I'm gonna just get my gun again. Keep you with me. That doesn't take long to dry. With the heat gun especially. He looks cute. I like it. And once you varnish it, oh my gosh, it's gonna look so cute. I'm gonna put snow tech on his top, on his pom pom. There, that's starting to dry now. There we go. Oh, it seems like the wash makes me lose what I just did. But I guess we're just doing a piling texture on there. I'm drinking soda. Mmm. Shade around the edge with burnt sienna. And then the icing is light buttermilk. I'm gonna get a um a new palette because I just I don't know. I wanna see what colors because I don't never mind, just because. <laughs> um so burnt sienna I need. It's here. Oopsie. I like to write the name of the paint on the lids. Cause I have my paint like I went and got all my paint and I put it in one of these bins. And then when you're looking for your color. You can just look on top so you don't have to be able to see the 
the, the um, label. And I've done that for years. All right, so burnt sienna. And then it's always good when your label falls off because your paint is so old. <laughs> Anywho, we're floating. So back to the old, what is this, three cent angle. Oh my God. Sorry, soda makes me burp. That's, I can't believe I just did that. Hmm, should I erase? All right, go away and come back.